you know that Jesus can fix whatever is broken in your life? He certainly can. He can repair your life. He can repair your family. He can make a big difference if you will just simply trust in Him today. Hi, everyone. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. You've tuned your dial to Spiritual Perspective, and I pray that this 30-minute program will be of a great help to you today as we're dealing with the miracle of healing, and you're going to be blessed. That's in Mark chapter 7. We're going to pick up around verse 31 and go up to verse 37. You know, whatever you've got going on in your life, you know you can bring it to Jesus today. Peter said, casting your every care upon him, for he cares for you. And I'm glad the songwriter wrote, No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no one like it unto him. He is greater than the great, bigger than the biggest. He is fantastic. He can perform miracles. He can meet needs. He can lift diseases. He can save souls. And just to know that he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm glad that we've got a better place to go to. Well, those are the things we're going to be sharing today, talking about the miracle of healing. And let me tell you today, maybe you're watching this program. Let me first just assert to you that I am not a physician. I am not a doctor. I am not a healer. But I'll tell you what, my God is able to do all things. And today, through the power of prayer, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, he said, that will I do. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. God can do all things above and beyond whatever you can imagine. And we can call upon him today, and he will provide healing. Maybe you're going through a cancer battle, or heart problem, or maybe you're going through a, a need of a healing in your family, in your relationships. Maybe you need a healing in your mind. Maybe you need a healing in your heart. Whatever the need is, my God is able. We're going to talk about that, but first let me just take a brief moment and remind you that Gethsemane Baptist Church will be worshiping the Lord this Sunday, and we would love for you to be a part of it. Service times 9.30 or 11.30, and we're going to be continuing this for a while. I don't know. We just may continue this indefinitely, and uh, you can come and worship. And yes, the music is amazingly good. Uh, Brother Tom, our worship leader, always puts together a beautiful package of music to uplift the name of the Lord and to bless God's people. The people are just exceedingly friendly here. You'll find they'll be greeting you and welcoming you and let you know that they're so glad to see you. They'll give you a welcome gift for coming, and you'll just be glad that you came. And you'll hear the preaching of God's Word that I pray will challenge and change your life Boy, Gethsemane is a great place to be. 411 Blue Ridge Street is one block off of Lakeside Drive. And, of course, Blue Ridge is just one block up on Lakeside, just one block up from the University of Lynchburg. Bring your family. Load up the cars and bring everyone and your neighbors and come to Gethsemane this Sunday. I just believe you'll be mightily blessed of the Lord. Yes, we have a great in program for kids. You say, hey, in the world you do that? All I can say is come see for yourself because, boy, I tell you, God has surely blessed it, and he'll bless you for coming. And many folks are coming to this church, and we're very thankful for that because they are receiving the word of God, and it's making a difference in their life. And we want to make a difference in your life, too. So we would simply say, you know, there's no place like home, and Gethsemane Baptist Church is home. Come home to Gethsemane this Sunday. We are thankful to the Lord for the opportunities that he's given us to reach out in our community, which we have been doing through this entire year in the 12 for 21, 12 months. We have done something for different agencies each month of this year, and we will continue to do that. And we've got a couple events coming up, but one in particular I want to bring to your attention that we could use your help on if you would like to and uh, be a part of. And that is, of course, we work with the Department of Social Services here in Lynchburg. And what we do in December, we provide baby dolls for little girls and action figures for little boys. And, uh, and, and this is a way to help foster children. 
homes that are in turmoil and situations. And, you know, they are doing a tremendously good job there. And we certainly appreciate working with them. Last year, we just loaded up vehicles and hauled bags and bags, large trash bags just full, no trash in them, full of baby dolls, new baby dolls and action figures. And it was very touching. It brought tears and it was very touching to know that we could bless children in that community. You can have a part in that. And all you need to do is just let us know if you'd like to be a part of it. And you can, when you make your uh, shopping list, and now's a good time to do it with what they're telling us. And uh, you can, when you go to the department stores, you can pick up some baby dolls or action figures or both. Get in touch with me and I'll be glad to meet you here at the church. And we want to double what we did last year. I forgot how many, and I've got to check the numbers and maybe on the next program I'll let you know that. But we had so many action figures and baby dolls, and it was just overwhelmingly good. And we want to really do that again this year, but even to a greater proportion. We need your help. And I know God will bless you for that. Great things are happening at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Just not in this church, but we're reaching out of our church walls into our community and blessing others. Well, let's talk today about the miracle of healing. And, uh, you know, it's amazing what our God can do. There's... Uh, so many things that we find in God's Word that reminds us that Christ is a miracle-working Savior. Not only does it work a miracle in salvation in our hearts and our lives, but we also find that He performs miracles in other capacities. Healing, not only physically, but emotionally, mentally, relationally, spiritually. So realizing this, that Jesus... Here in the book of Mark, Mark records three miracles that Jesus performed during the journey into what we know as a Gentile territory. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus cast out a demon from a woman's daughter. Secondly, we find in Mark 7, Jesus heals a deaf man with a speech impediment. And what a powerful miracle that he performed there in those two things. And then thirdly, in Mark 8, we find Jesus fed 4,000 people with seven loaves of bread. I mean, is there anything that he can't do? Well, the Word of God says in Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen 17, says, A Lord God, there's nothing too hard for thee. So in a real sense, you know, what we read in this text today from Mark 7, that the point is the fact that these miracles and things that he performed, that Jesus crossed the barriers of that time to set people free. There's nothing and no one that God can't reach. There's not a person that Christ cannot change a situation or change a heart. So the miracle of Jesus healing this deaf man is a miracle that brings to us a tremendous message that we need to heed and need to apply to our lives. Only Jesus can restore what sin has broken in our lives. Now you think about your life. You think about those days where you were serving Satan. You think about the issues that you were going through and the pains that you were wreaking and the problems that you were encountering and the things that you were doing to yourself. And then you ask Christ to come into your heart and your life. He changed everything. He changed your heart, your mind, your life, your eternity. And then he even applied the grace and the healing of, hell, of heaven in your benefit. And let me tell you what, whatever sin has wrecked, Jesus can today repair broken lives. He can restore your home. Listen, family sitting there today, and maybe you're watching this program. Maybe your family is somewhat on shaky ground. Maybe you just don't have that love for each other that you used to have. What happened? You've omitted God out of your life is what's happened. He can restore the love in your marriage. He can restore your children. If you've got wayward children that are in drugs or alcohol or other sins, he today can restore them. You don't give up on them. You know, I think we've all been in those situations in life, even in our own individual lives, the things that we have done. But God didn't throw the clay away, did He? And He didn't give up on us, did He? Even when people gave up on us, thank God He never gave up on us. And He provided the help and the healing that we need. We find that Jesus was deep into the Gentile territory, yet 
he could not escape, for Gentiles knew who Jesus was. How did the Gentiles recognize who Jesus was? Well, remember back in Mark 5, if you'll read that, how that he had cast out legions of demons from a man. And that's scripturally recorded. And the residents de uh, deported Jesus, and the man who had the legion basically tried to go with him. So Jesus refused uh, and commanded that the man go home and tell his friends how much the Lord had done for him. Boy, if we could just enumerate all the things that God did for us, I'm not sure if there would be sufficiency of paper to record it all. Mark 5 and 20 says, And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. This is the power of a genuine Christian testimony. And God has given you a testimony today. Maybe it's not like this testimony. Maybe it's just one that you were lost, but you're now found. You know, it's not that you've got to have some big thing that happened in your life, or you have to be down in drugs and alcohol, or you have to be down into these things. Let me tell you what, I don't care where you're at in life. I don't care whether you're deep in it, or if you're just a uh, a lost church member. Christ can save you today and give you a testimony to the greatness of God. The testimony is not about what you used to be. The testimony is what Christ has saved you to be and the difference that he's made in your life. So the testimony of a changed man spread the name of Jesus far and wide. We do not need to be silent about what Jesus has done in our lives. So when Jesus entered into Capolis, the Gentile people, they recognized him. And in Mark 7, 32, it says, And they bring, him, bring unto him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand upon him. The people that brought this man to Jesus were anonymous heroes in one sense of the speaking. There was no indication that the man had faith in Jesus. Probably he did not. And he didn't know who Jesus really was. But think about this, that there, were, that, that there are people in your life with problems that only Jesus could fix. And maybe today they don't know who Jesus is, but you can be a testimony to who he is. And today you can let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We need to be human billboards to the glory and the greatness of our God. You can be a, a, be a hero today. You can be a hero. Pray diligently for people that need salvation. Not only that, but be a hero and seek opportunities, to, opportunities today to have a gospel conversation with people today. It's amazing how you can draw Christ into a conversation when talking to people. And third, be a hero. Do whatever it takes to bring a person to Christ I remember years ago, I lived in San Antonio, Texas. I was in the United States Air Force. We lived in a beautiful home and had planned really to live there the rest of our lives. But God had another plan for us. Well, there was a gentleman and his wife that lived up the street from us. I kept inviting him to church, kept inviting him to church, kept inviting him to church. And every time you turned around, it was another excuse. So finally... The, the uh, Randolph Air Force Base was having an air show, and the Thunderbirds were coming to town. So I invited him. I said, listen, uh, Thunderbirds are going to be out at Randolph Air Force Base, where I, where I was stationed. And I said, would you like to go to the air show Sunday? Oh, yes, absolutely. I said, well, listen, you go to church with us, and then we'll go get something to eat and go to the air show after that. Well, he said, okay, I'll go. He went to his home. He told his wife. He said, I just can't believe what I just did. I just committed us to go to church, and there's no way out of it because Carlton is not going to let us out of it. Well, the, the short story of the long story is this. They came to church. They came to church. I wouldn't let him back, let off the hook. I wouldn't let him off the pressure. And one Sunday evening, we were in choir practice. He was sitting out there, and he was squirming in the pew and just couldn't sit still like a worm in hot ashes. And, and as soon as the choir practice was over, he grabbed me by the arm, took me to the back of the church. He said, we need to talk. And I thought, oh, my heavens. He said, and then tears started to well up in his face. 
He said, I'm lost and I need to be saved. You know, folks, we can't give up on people. You know what that man's doing today? He's serving God. He's been a missionary in the foreign field, and now he's helping to build churches and pastoring churches and doing a work for Christ. He and his wife and family. An amazing story. And there are others, and there are other stories that I could share with you. Let me tell you, Jesus knows what he's doing, and he knows what he wants to do in your life and mine if we'll open our lives up for him to move. You know, the double handicap, the, the problem of a physical handicap was horrendous. This man they brought to Jesus, he had two severe disabilities. And first, he was deaf. He was unable to hear. Secondly, he had a speech impediment. He could not express himself. He spoke with difficulty. It was a challenge to him. He had crippled motor skills that caused him to stammer and stutter and struggle to speak and to get his words out. And it was embarrassing to him. And in the ancient world, the deaf were typically mute. So there was no technology available. There were no doctors and no universities. There were no miracle healing uh, types of medication and technology available. And as a result, being deaf was basically worse than, than being blind, really. And, and so they, this man was in a basically helpless state with no hope and no direction in his life. And the deaf even considered to be demon-possessed and, and because they could not hear nor speak. And I think this is one of the most remarkable cases that was ever brought to Jesus. The, the picture in this is not just the physically handicapped, but the spiritual handicap. You know, this man's double handicap illustrates two spiritual problems that every sinner has. Sinners cannot hear right, and sinners cannot speak right. So since the Garden of Eden, we realize that man will listen to anyone else, but will not listen to God. You know what Adam and Eve did. God had told them what to do and what not to do, and they disobeyed him. We disobey him too. So Jesus said in the parable of the sower, he who hath an ear, let him hear. Now let me tell you today, just because you have ears does not mean today you can have ears to hear. Hearing divine truth is more today than just uh, simulating, uh, audio, uh, stimulating audio nerves. It's, opening and of a, it's the opening of a closed heart. It's the fact that we were dead and Christ made us alive. It's a miracle of healing that only Jesus can perform in a life, and he will perform in a life. But you've got to bring that life to him. Because today, in actuality, if you're lost, you are deaf and you can't speak. Because today, even though you're physically alive, you're spiritually dead. But he opens your heart and he brings in the life of the gospel and you're gloriously and wonderfully saved. And now, out of your mouth will proceed the truth of God's word. And you'll be like a river of water springing forth unto everlasting life of telling the story of the grand Savior that has saved and delivered you and worked to work in you today. Only Jesus can get the gospel from the ear to the heart and that we today can be saved again, or be saved and know Christ in free part of sin. We don't need to be saved again. Listen, you only need to be saved once and come to Christ and receive him and mean business with him today. Sinners cannot talk right either. So therefore, this is a running theme that is contained in Mark's gospel. Sinners cannot hear the message of the kingdom, and they have the, the inability to hear, understand, and believe the gospel. And let me tell you today, once that gospel is received, you're hearing it today. It will change your life forever. Thank God today, we now can sing praises unto our God and give glory unto his name because we know that our Redeemer lives and he lives within our heart. You know, I'm so glad the Lord opened my lips, my heart, my life and changed me. And as we approach in the end of the program, then there's that prophetic miracle that he performed. The miracle Jesus performed for the death was really a prophetic miracle. 
It was just not a demonstration of his authority. It was a declaration of his identity. It declared that Jesus is the Son of the living God. The true identity of Jesus is revealed through the, the mercy that he displayed and the miracle that he performed. And let me tell you, his mercy today reaches us where we are, but doesn't leave us like we are. And that glorious miracle of salvation changes and transforms us into being a child of God. Jesus' ministry there to the, to the deaf, it was private, personal, and prayerful. And he reached that man. And so today, I'm telling you, he can reach you where you are. Are you in need of a miracle? I believe the first miracle that everyone needs today is the miracle of salvation. And today he will save you if you will call upon him and invite him into your heart and your life. And not only will he save you in that miracle of salvation and write your name in heaven and give you eternal life and be a constant companion, a friend, and, and he will never leave nor forsake you and he will always be there with you and for you. Thank you, Lord, for that blessing. But also today... He can perform miracles that are needed in your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and, and relationally today. Whatever is in your life, I'm glad today you can be ministered to by Jesus. He'll hear your cry, your call. He will give you hope. When you're overwhelmed by the things of this world and the issues that you're facing, thank God you can go to the rock. And there, that rock of ages is the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God His healing will be given to you through His sovereign grace today. That's what our God can do. Before Jesus healed the deaf man, He looked up to heaven and then He sighed. This reflects the strong emotion that Jesus had for this man. Jesus cares about you today. Every part of you, every detail of your life today. And Jesus will perform a miracle if you'll call upon him today. He will work a mighty work in your life if you will seek him today. The Lord Jesus spoke and he sent the said to be open. And thank God this man was given sight. The miracles that he performed were amazing, but they didn't stop when he arose and ascended back into heaven. Those miracles are still being performed today. You're looking at a miracle. A miracle in salvation, a miracle in healing, a miracle of grace, of what Christ has done for me. In every aspect of my life, every part of me, from the heart, every part of me, to the, to the spiritual aspect of me, to the relational, to the physical, to every part. And if he's done that for me, he'll do that for you. But you've got to trust him. You've got to have faith in him. You've got to put your confidence in the Lord. One word from Jesus makes the difference. And he wants to make a difference in your life if you will open your life up to him today. The authority of Jesus has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. One word from Jesus can open what is closed today. It can heal that which is broken and it can restore that which has been lost. And only today can Jesus do this. I'm grateful for doctors and others that today are in the different fields that help people. But I'm going to tell you, there's none likened unto our Lord. Because He is the true miracle worker. And today He's still performing miracles. Why don't you open your life and let Him perform a miracle for you today? I'm glad today he's there for you. If you're lacking disobedience, you can come back and today you can, you can repent and get right with God and be restored. If there's needs in your life, he can meet them. If there's a need of salvation, he can give that to you. And then there's something else that we need to do. We need to praise him for what he's done. And, and we today need to be astonished at this great God that we serve. I'm amazed of how he does what he does, but I'm amazed that he is so great and grand and glorious and good. And we're so undeserving, but he loves us. And he's always there for us. 
No one ever loved me like Jesus and cared for me like Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm glad today he has done, he is doing, and he shall do great things if we will simply open our lives up to the miracle of the healing power that is found in Jesus today. Open your life. Let him do a work in you. I pray. If you're sick, I pray God will heal you. If today your home is in a mess, in shambles, I pray that he'll restore your home and your relationship and your family. If you're going through anxieties and worries and frustrations, I pray today he'll calm your spirit. And today, if you're lost, I pray he will save your soul. Thank you for tuning in to Spiritual Perspective, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church. Our service times this Sunday, 9.30, 11.30 a.m., You'll really enjoy the music. You'll enjoy our beautiful worship facility. You'll enjoy the care that we take in keeping it spotless and clean. You'll enjoy the friendly, compassionate, and kind people. You will enjoy the preaching of God's Word that will bless you. And you'll be able to say, I'm glad that I came home to Gethsemane. There is no place like home. And Gethsemane, we're waiting for you to come home to GBC this Sunday. You will be blessed at location 411 Blue Ridge Street. We are located just one block off of Lakeside Drive. Blue Ridge Street is just one block up on Lakeside Drive from the University of Lynchburg. In Pew program for our kids, teens and young kids. We just had a big trunk or treat occasion this past Sunday evening. We've got other things planned we are blessing our kids and our young people, and we want to bless your family. So come to Gethsemane and enjoy what God has for you here. I promise you, you'll be glad that you came. People come and they keep coming. What does that say? They found a home, and there's no place like Gethsemane Baptist Church. I'm Carlton Duck, the pastor, and I certainly have enjoyed being with you today. This program, along with our flagship program in the garden, that's an hour program, along with um, many other things that we're seeking to do and developing and how sweet the sound and viewpoint and different teaching programs. And we're constantly trying to develop more things to encourage your heart from the gospel music, from family-friendly entertainment to other church programs, Gethsemane Baptist Church, which we, uh, we own and operate a live TV, and it is our blessing to bring you the gospel. We don't get, in here, get on here and ask you for money. No, we need. Thank God God paid for our station in full. Sure, we have expenses, but the Lord meets those needs. We just want you to watch this channel and be blessed by it and encourage others to watch it and may it be a blessing to you in all things. Thank you today for tuning in. And may God bless you through this week. We're praying for you, and we love you. And may God bless you. See you at home, Gethsemane Baptist Church. Mm -hmm.